Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many know it's not about us? It's not about us. It's about Jesus. Welcome to the part of South State International Ministries. Dayton, Ohio. Amen. We are so glad that you've joined us online this morning and in the house this morning. Man, that song was so applicable. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, just take a moment right there and just take a couple deep breaths and just release some of that stuff that uh, yeah, even this morning See, we don't know what it took for any one of us to get here this morning. But I do know for a matter of fact that the enemy tried to stop you from getting here. David said, if I could just make it to the house of the Lord. <laughs> I don't know about you. He tried to stop me this morning. He tried to discourage me this morning. But I understand now that it's not about me. But it's about Jesus. I mean, so again, we want to welcome you. Man, we're so glad that you tuned in this morning. We're so glad that you're here. Man, we are humbled and honored to be connected to such a phenomenal group of people. Know this. It's not about you. But it's about Jesus. But with Jesus, it's about you. It's about you. Amen. Amen. Quick scripture this morning out of Matthew. The ninth chapter, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. I'll be reading Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease amongst the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Amen. If you're here this morning, you part of that laboring crew that God is preparing in this place to send out. Because the harvest is the souls. The harvest is the people. Amen. We come here to worship. We go out to serve. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you. We're excited about what you're going to deposit this morning into our spirit, oh God. We've come with a spirit of expectancy, Father God. Father God, we wouldn't come if we didn't expect you to move, if we didn't expect you to say something. So, Father God, this morning, help us to lean in to you. Help us to put off anything that might distract or discourage us from hearing from you, Father God, that you might pour into us, Father God, out of your rich treasures. Father God, we're ready. Father God, we're expecting. Father God, we love you. We appreciate you. We adore you. And we need you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. Hallelujah.
gonna celebrate it right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. today hallelujah because he is worthy hallelujah we love him because he is worthy to be praised hallelujah hallelujah we thank him on today hallelujah it might be warm in the place but he is still worthy of the praise hallelujah hallelujah when i think about all the things that could have took me out hallelujah that he's gonna be the one to do it hallelujah he is worthy of the praise hallelujah we glorify him on today we magnify his name hallelujah Come on, all over the sanctuary, just give him a hand clap of praise and begin to tell him thank you, hallelujah, for his goodness, hallelujah, for his mercy, hallelujah. We love him all today, hallelujah. He is worthy, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Worship and worship and worship him. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. 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 That's that place. That's that place right there, y'all. That's that place right there. Hey, come on. Some of you been thirsting for God. Some of you been needing God. Getting into the presence of God. Because in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. And in his right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. The devil been beating you down all week long. You've had stuff going on all week long. And God allows you to get into this place where you can get into his presence and find the release that you need. Is it Jesus? Somebody say Jesus! Sometimes that's the only prayer you got. Sometimes you got you. Sometimes you did in the, in the service they used to call them foxhole prayers. Amen. Sometimes I call them Peter prayers. Amen. Because my bishop said I got a Peter spirit. But when Peter was getting ready to sink, he didn't have time to articulate eloquently. He, he, he was in trouble. He just said, Lord, save me. Come on, this is that time. This is that time right there. This is that time right there. This is that time when you can lift up the name of the Lord. This is that time when you don't worry about who's standing to the left of you, who's standing to the right of you, or who ain't standing to the left or to the right of you. This is that time where we connect with him. Amen. 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 Again, so good to see everybody this morning. God bless you. I believe God got a blessing for us this morning. And it may not be it may not be financial. It may not be a physical blessing. But I believe God is a God, still the God of breakthroughs. He's still the God of healing. If you need a healing this morning, in your body, or even in your mind, in your emotions, God is the Lord. He said, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Amen. Come on, I'm, I, 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 I feel that thing. Hallelujah. I don't know. I don't know about you, but sometimes I got to go for this thing by myself. Sometimes I got to go for myself. Sometimes I need to have a private, personal conversation with God. I can't even articulate to you what's going on inside my mind and what's going on inside my emotions and what she ain't doing and what he ain't doing and what they ought to be doing. What I ought to be doing, what I ought to be doing is finding myself in the face of God, asking God what God wants me to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because my salvation is dependent upon what anybody else does but what I do. Amen. Amen. I like stuff that don't go all the way perfect all the time. Amen. I like stuff that ain't perfectly ordered all the time. I know the Bible says all things done decently and in order. I get that, but guess who gets to set the order? God. I don't get to set the order. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, we just thank you again. We thank you for the word that's going to come forth today. Father God, we pray that you bless our pastor this morning. Father God, we thank you that what you have deposited in him that you would draw it out of him, that living water, that it would be clear and concise, convicting and converting, consoling and comforting, encouraging and edifying. We bless your name, Father God. We thank you. And again, we love you. We honor you and appreciate you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And I have been touched. Put your hand on your neighbor say, you have been touched. Put your hand on them and say, you have been touched, changed, healed. Say this, totally free from sin. Say that again, totally free from I have been touched, changed, healed.
you want to say it. Come on. Every shackle. Every Said he broke every chain. Now I can live. Now I can live.
I'm so glad that he died. Hallelujah. Now I'm free. Hallelujah. Just look at somebody and say, I'm free. Hallelujah. I'm free because the blood has washed me clean. I'm free because the blood has made me whole. Hallelujah. I'm free. Hallelujah. Because he sacrificed his life. Hallelujah. And I'm free. Hallelujah. That's a good place to lift your hands and say, Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. You're waving. Hallelujah. 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 I'm so glad. Hallelujah. Come on, wherever you are, just begin to worship him. Just begin to worship him. Hallelujah. Let him hear you. Hallelujah. Let him hear the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship him, hallelujah. After this song came, the next words will begin. We'll be our passing, hallelujah.
me in your arms. How many of you want to be wrapped up this morning? Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. No better place to be than wrapped up in Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He got arms enough for all of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our announcement for Sunday, August 6th. Uh, text alert messaging. Please join our uh, text alert uh, messaging so that you can stay connected. Amen. Join us for Bible study on Thursdays at 12 noon. If you are available, amen, join us for early morning prayer at 6 a.m. every day. Amen. Every day. Uh, if you don't have the info, I got it for you. Hallelujah. I, I don't know who don't need prayer. I, 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 and I'm leave that right there. I don't know who don't need prayer. In this day and time, amen, every ministry is seeking assistance. Please see the ministry leader if you'd like to help out. If you don't know who that leader is, um, ask me or ask uh, one of the elders, um, and we can certainly point you in the right direction. The back to uh, Vacation Bible School begins tomorrow. Amen. Vacation Bible School begins tomorrow. Come on. We need a little bit more enthusiasm than that. <laughs> Amen. Now, if, if, if you're, you know, around my age, you know what B Vacation Bible School meant. It was something to look forward to, and we're trying to get back to that for our children. Amen that there's an opportunity for them to be able to uh, learn the things of God uh, shared in a fun way. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> the Back to School Jam is uh, this Saturday. Um, amen. <clears throat> Donations of bags and supplies or money is acceptable. Uh, I challenged uh, you all to uh, to uh, match Deacon Levi, who brought in 25 bags last weekend. Amen. Uh, originally, the challenge was two, uh, and if you can do that, uh, amen. We appreciate whatever you can do. I promise you, we're not going to tell you to take those bags back. We're going to take those bags and stick them in with the rest of them. Amen. Amen. And if you don't want to bring them, you don't want nobody to know you, you, you brought them, call me. I'll come get them. Amen. So you have no excuse. Amen. Amen. Uh, this week as well, there will be nightly worship with uh, Grace Outreach Fellowship with Pastor Foster right in the uh, lot next to the garage. Uh, August 9th, 10th, and 11th at 7 p.m. So after Vacation Bible School, you just walk across the parking lot. Amen. And joy and opportunity for outreach and evangelism. Uh, August Awareness. This month is National Immunization, Immunization Month. Amen. And speaking of, uh, we're, 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 we know COVID exist amen and currently the numbers are rising and we know why because we're out and we're about and everybody didn't get vaccinated and that's okay we're not upset with you but please be careful amen we don't want anybody to think that this pandemic is over and that you're safe the enemy is out to steal kill and destroy Amen. Uh, please, um, it's also National Wellness Month. So please make sure that you are doing everything that you can to stay 
uh, well, if you haven't gotten your physical for this year, go have that done. Ladies, uh, any other um, wellness checks that we have to do, we encourage you to do that. And um, this is not a, 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 a female thing. Men, we encourage you to go do what you need to do because our rates of susceptibility to so many uh, illnesses, uh, cancers, is high just because we're black. And we're not going to pretend that we're so saved and sanctified that it won't happen to us. Amen? Go get a check. Check. Knowledge is empowerment. Don't be, a, don't be afraid because that's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you not to know what might be going on with you. Amen? He will take you out and clap his hands while he's doing it. Amen? Please continue praying for our sick, shut-in, and bereaved families. Uh, Sister Tasha is in uh, physical therapy. Sister Marquita uh, is uh, in therapy as well. Um, our services for uh, Doc's sister, Sister Shirley Freeman, is Wednesday, uh, the 16th of August. And uh, we are certainly praying for you, Doc. We love you. Uh, and we appreciate who you are to this fellowship. And we certainly uh, agree with you uh, on today. Amen. Uh, Sister uh, Janelle's cousin uh, was, was, was the male that was killed uh, downtown Dayton this past week. Uh, and it was her uncle um, that we were praying for earlier this year. It was his son. So let's pray for that family. Uh, obviously, the enemy is trying to discourage them. Obviously, the enemy is trying to take them out. So we lift them up in prayer. And on yesterday, uh, on, on Friday, we did uh, funeralize Sister Ruth Glass, Glass's nine-month-old baby. So continue to pray for uh, that family as well. We thank God this morning uh, because he has uh, the ability to help us in our time of need. He has the ability to uh, encourage us, uh, to keep us when we don't even want to be kept. So we thank God this morning for his awesome power. And he is a keeper. And if you don't know that he's a keeper, ask somebody who's gone through. I guarantee you if I ask anybody who's gone through anything this year to raise their hands that we'd see some hands go up so if you don't know him just ask one of them you saw them hands go ask one of them amen god is good did we have any birthdays or anniversaries last week any birthdays to sister nancy wednesday was her birthday happy birthday god bless you Anybody else? Jamar, did I see your hand go up? You were just like, amen, praise the Lord, amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? Amen. The women got together yesterday, a few of us, and uh, we kind of fellowshiped and encouraged one another as we were cleaning. So uh, we didn't get it all clean. Uh, it's, it's a task. Uh, we will do it again, and hopefully we will, we will get it done and uh, we'll let you know in advance. So if you got that cleaning spirit, we want you to come help us clean uh, our spaces. Amen. That is our announcements for today. Amen. Sheree's birthday is today. Sheree, stay up, baby. Sheree got a haircut. You know, he looked different, don't he? You got a haircut. He's 10 today. Happy birthday. We love you.
tu word. Lord, speak a word. Speak a word unto my soul. Lord, speak a word. together for Jesus Christ. My desire is to hear your word for real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, man of God, for that blessed, uh, blessed rendition this morning. That was absolutely wonderful, both for those songs that I've heard since coming out into the sanctuary. We just want to give God glory. Amen. One more time. Will you give God praise for Jesus Christ? Come on, saints, amen. He's been good to us. He's been better to us than we've been we clapping this morning. Come on, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Yeah, he's been good to us. Amen. And my desire, has anybody got a desire to hear from the Lord for real? Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. My desire is to hear your word for real. Bless the name of the Lord. I'm not going to keep you long. Amen. So glad to have you in the house of God and to be among God's people this morning. Amen. I, gotta, I, I want to give a shout out to all the, the birthdays this week. Amen. And uh, I, I just, just, I, I just allow me to love on my son this morning. Amen. Prince Sharik got his first haircut. Amen. On his 10th birthday. Amen. Birthday is today, 10 years old. And uh, sit up, son, sit up. Amen. I know you're tired, been up early in the morning trying to keep up with me. Get, sit up, son. Amen. Ten years old, uh, uh, looking like a young man. Amen. Blessed in the Lord and highly favored. We thank God for him. And we thank God for all of our children. We just thank God for all the people of God. Amen. Who are enjoying birthdays this week. And I'm just grateful. Amen. That the Lord, amen, loves me so that he's blessed me with these two young men of God, amen, who love God, amen, and I, and I thank you for all of my children, but I really, I thank him, I especially thank him today for my 10-year-old, Prince Sharik, amen. God bless you, son. 
blessed man of God. We're so honored and just grateful uh, for, for him and for what the Lord is doing in his life. We thank God for First Lady Moss, amen, uh, as she cares for our children and, and takes very good care of them. And we're just honored, amen, uh, that the Lord will bless our lives the way that he has. And we give him glory for all of our children. And we give him glory for all of your children. And we're thankful, amen, uh, that the Lord has entrusted us the way that he has, amen, with his goodness and his grace. Can you shout hallelujah? There is a word this morning, amen, and we give honor to our bishop, Bishop Mark C. McGuire Sr. and Lady Nairu, I mean Lady Angela, amen, down in Jacksonville, Florida, we thank God for, amen, our, our, um, our grand, grand bishop in the ministry, Bishop Von McLaughlin and Lady Nairu, we give God glory for them. We thank God for all the ministerial staff and those here working, amen, the elder council and uh, all of our uh, deacons and ministers in the gospel of Christ. Uh, and we thank God for all of you, the people of God, those who are faithful, those who continue to show up, continue to dig in, to continue, amen, to give God glory with your life, amen, and with your substance. We thank God for each and every one of you, and we're so glad, amen, that no matter what, amen, you are depending and trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. You ought to give God praise for your own life, amen, hallelujah, because I know, amen, ain't anything like me, you've been pushed, you've been pushed this morning, you been pushed all through the week. You got all kind of things going on in and around your life. And here you are this morning, sold up in the house of God to give God glory. Go ahead and put your hands together and bless the name of the Lord for your life this morning. Hallelujah. We got Sister Carrie and, and Brother Crusoe in the house this morning. Amen. They too, amen, just suffered a loss, amen, in their family. Uh, their uncle, uh, Sister Carrie's uncle went to be with the Lord, amen, had an opportunity to go out and speak with him over at hospice last week, amen, and be able to just pray with him and the family. We thank God for Sister Carrie and Brother Minister, real William Crusoe, amen, Willie Crusoe, God bless Brother Crusoe, bless man of God, and we so honored to have him and all of our clergy that are visiting with us on today and all of our uh, saints of God, amen, that comes to give God glory. I do believe, amen, that the Lord has uh, a word for us on this morning. Uh, and in the absence of Lady Moss, we just thank God for her, amen. She's uh, on her way, I do, uh, do understand, amen. I had her to run an errand for me this morning, amen. But uh, until she gets here, we just thank God for her safe travels and all those that are still on the way to church, amen. Amen, got a late start today, perhaps. Uh, but those watching online, we thank God for you, amen. We give God glory for each and every one of you, hallelujah. We pray. Hallelujah, that you're seeing the hand of God move in your life. If you will with me, turn with me uh, to our focal peripety this morning, Mark chapter 14, verse 22. Mark 14, verse 22. I'm going to read one scripture, amen, and we'll ask those that are able to stand that you would stand with us at the reading of God's word. Hallelujah. It is uh, first Sunday. Hallelujah, we're excited, amen, because we get to share in the Lord's Supper today, amen. And so we invite you to, be, to do that with us on today, immediately following service. Uh, but we're going to just talk about, amen, what, uh, uh, what the Lord uh, did for us and what he's doing, amen, even now in our lives because of this great supper. Mark 14, verse 22, the word of God reads as follows. And as they did eat... Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Put your hands together for the word of God this morning. <laughs> Father God, we ask that you would have your way. Hallelujah. And allow... Uh, our desire to be just that this morning, God, uh, to hear your voice, to hear your word, uh, that you would speak to your people, amen. Your servants have all gathered. We're here, Father, and we're ready to hear from what thus saith the Lord this morning. We honor you today, God, hallelujah, that you allowed us to rise up, rise up this morning and to see this Sunday morning, hallelujah, August the 6th, 2023 a day that we've never seen before. We bless your name for this day, 
For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Here we are, saints of God, the first Sunday of the month here at the Potter's House Dayton International Ministries. And uh, which means, as we've noted, today is the day of the Lord's Supper. And Jesus said, as often uh, as we do this, and that word, uh, as we think about often, it means, amen, that whether it's once a year, once a month, uh, once a week, or even once a day, uh, uh, Jesus is saying, as often as we do this, we are to do this in remembrance of him. And we believe, amen, here at the Potter's House, amen, that this uh, meal that we're about to partake uh, here this morning is symbolically the bread and the wine. It represents the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, there are many, amen, mis misnomers, amen, about, about this word, amen. You got many who believe, amen, differently about different denominations and all that, how they believe they take the word and, 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 and how they eat the supper. Some believe, amen, you ought to eat it every week. Some believe, amen, you ought to eat it every time you gather. Some believe whatever they believe, amen, but there are a lot of mis misnomers about it. But we believe here, amen, that whenever we take the Lord's Supper, hallelujah, it's to give God glory and it's to remember him. Can you say amen? The truth of the matter is, my friend, is that Jesus gave it to the disciples as a reminder of what he was about to do on their behalf. Come on, Holy Ghost. Jesus gave this bread and this wine, amen, to the disciples as a reminder of letting them know what it was he was about to do on their behalf. When we believe, amen, with what the Word of God says, we see, amen, that when we practice this in post-resurrection, as we are doing today, it becomes a reminder to us that Jesus died for our sins when we could not die for ourselves. Can you say amen? Come on, Holy Ghost, you ought to get a little bit right there, ought to cause a shock to come up out of you. Jesus died for our sins when we couldn't die for ourselves, glory to God. Hallelujah, that ought to bring a shout out of us, amen, because if it had not been for the Lord, glory to God, I don't even have to ask where I would be, we know, glory to God, some of us know where we would be. Hallelujah, but we ought to be reminded when we take this uh, supper, we ought to be reminded, amen, number one, that I am a sinner. Amen. Look, let me let me say let me say it again for you. Amen. Uh, 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 let me say that uh, that I ought to be reminded that I am a sinner. Hallelujah. And notice I said I am. I didn't say you were. I said I am. You got to know God for yourself. And I know, amen, hallelujah, what the Bible says. But we got to know that one of the things that the Word of God does when we take this supper is to remind us, amen, the price Jesus paid for our lives. Come on, Holy Ghost. Yeah, he paid. He paid a price, amen, for us because we were sinners. The Bible says while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The second thing we ought to, this word ought to remind us about the Lord's Supper is that, amen, I deserve judgment. Come on, Holy Ghost. We deserve the judgment of Christ. The Bible it reminds us, amen, that this supper ought to remind us also that in spite of my wayward ways, in spite of my sinful ways, in spite of my bad decisions, Jesus loved me enough to save me from the penalty of sin and a burning hell. Somebody ought to give God praise this morning. Hallelujah. We take this supper every month, every time we come together, we ought to do this in remembrance of him. But there's some things we need to know why we take it, saints. We take it because we're sinners. We take it because we deserve judgment. We take it because, hallelujah, it reminds us that in spite of who we are, in spite of what we've done, in spite of what they say, in spite of what they know, in spite of what their enemies do, Jesus loved us enough to save us from the penalty of sin. Hallelujah. 
Somebody ought to give God glory right there because I don't know about you say hallelujah because I know a man of God would remove his hand from off of us. Amen. We would surely die. Tell your neighbor Jesus died for my sins. Jesus died for my sins. There's something else that happens, my friends, when we take the Lord's Supper. In a symbolic way, the Bible shares that we digest him. Jesus declares himself to be the bread. So symbolically, when, when, when we eat the bread, we digest internally him, amen, so that the taking of the bread reminds us that Jesus abides or lives within me. Come on, Holy Ghost. He lives in me to make us more like him. In other words, my friends, we ought to be, uh, it ought to be all of our goals this morning and every day of our life to be more and more like Jesus. We hear it every morning on the prayer line, amen. We hear it all the time and uh, throughout our work and, and the week during the week of the month, amen. We hear, amen, we want to be better in the Lord. We want to be more like Christ in the Lord. And the, 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 the suffering, I mean, just this blessed word of the Lord in this meal, the Lord's Supper that we take every month at the first Sunday of the month is to remind us, saints, Hallelujah, that Jesus abides within us. And so it ought to be our goal today and every day. Hallelujah, to be more like Christ. Hallelujah. You, 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 Y'all going to get used to me, amen, because I'm going to holler, help me, Holy Ghost, a whole lot today, amen, because I know, amen, that it's all because of Jesus. Jesus over everything this morning. It ought to be our goal, my friend. We, we sometimes we get it mixed up, church, I believe, amen, we get it mixed up sometimes because we think, amen, uh, that our goals are, are personal things, goals and things that we accomplish and all the things. But let me just share with you this morning, it is not my goal, it ought not be my goal just to be a better preacher. It ought not be my goal just to be a better pastor. But it ought to be my ultimate goal is to be more and more like my Jesus. That's my ultimate goal. Hallelujah. And if our goal is not to be more and more like him, hallelujah, you wasting your time. Hallelujah. Spinning your wheels doing something that does not matter. Glory to God. Yeah, yeah, my goal is not to get you to like me. Come on, Holy Ghost. Yeah, my goal, amen, I'm getting kind of hot up in here, amen, but my goal is not, amen, to please you, hallelujah, that I might tickle your fancy. My goal, amen, is to teach you and to help you understand that our ultimate goal in this life is to be more like Jesus. Is there anybody here like me this morning? Hallelujah. They can say amen. Father God, make me more like Jesus. Hallelujah. I need the Lord to make me more like Jesus. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. We talked about the psalmist David. And David cried out to the Lord. He said, Lord, make me live like you make me talk like you make me God to love like you make me God to see like you see help me God hallelujah to walk the way you walk help me Lord he, one, one verse said he told he said Lord cause me to do your will I don't know about you this morning, saints, amen, but this morning I'm making my declaration unto the Lord. Lord, I need you to make me more like you. I need you, God, hallelujah, to make me talk right, to walk right, to live right, hallelujah, to love right. Help me, Holy Ghost. I want to be more like Jesus. And my friends, when I take him in, the Bible is clear that we become more and more like him. Jesus doesn't make this claim 
of the bread being him until after a series of things have taken place. Ah, he doesn't declare the bread being his body at the very beginning. He does several things uh, before declaring that the bread is his body. He takes the bread, hallelujah, through a process. Come on, Holy Ghost. Before he declares it upon it or before he prays over it or before, amen, he calls it what it is. Before he brings it to the purpose that he's called it to be. That you don't just show up, amen, in the process of your purpose. Amen. In other words, you don't just come to church, hallelujah, and show up, hallelujah, and now you're in your purpose. No, no, purpose, amen. God is saying that there is a purpose, amen. Hallelujah. There is a purpose for you, but before you receive the purpose, you got to go through the process. Come on, Holy Ghost. I'm talking to somebody, amen. Hallelujah. There is a process that God brings us to and through before we become what he called us to be. Ultimately, my friends, the goal of God is his glory. And God's glory, he will never risk his glory by putting on you in a by putting you in a purpose that you're not ready for. Come on, Holy Ghost. He will hold the purpose and work on you until all of you are ready to handle what it is he has for you to do. Oh, I'm going somewhere, amen, just stick close to me, I promise you, God's got a word for you this morning. The Bible says, amen, throughout scripture, that God is developing our character. He's developing us in such a way that we'll be more like him each and every day. Tell your neighbor, my friend, it's a process. It's a process. It's a process. And that's why, my friend, that's why, that's why you got to be careful. That's why you can't get judgmental when you see folk making mistakes. Come on, come come, come help me here, Elder. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm coming on my jacket because y'all know I, I, I'm a runner. And I will, I will run. Amen. But I, I just hear God saying, pull it off of this, sir. Amen. Go ahead and pull that. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yes, sir. Pull that thing off of it. Hallelujah. Bless you, sir. Uh, look, listen to me say what I can't say. Look, God says, it's a process, and so you got to be careful not to be so judgmental when you see folk making mistakes. And that's why, and not only that, my friend, but God is saying to us, that's why, amen, you ought not act like you have never made a mistake before. Come on, Holy Ghost. I got news for you this morning, my brothers and sisters. That's why people fall, because it's a part of the process, glory to God. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> People fall because it's a part of the process. God knows, amen, that in order to birth purpose in us, there has to be a process. Can you say amen? So good news, my friends. Good news. Shame on us. More holy than thy folk who turn our noses up at people who fall and who make mistakes and don't realize, amen, that falling and making mistakes is a part of the process. Oh, yeah, come on, Holy Ghost. Y'all got real quiet right there. The truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, you done fell too. You done made some bad choices too. You done made some bad, messed up tra tra decisions too. Hallelujah. You ain't done everything right. You ain't done it every eye. You ain't crossed every T. And you a liar if you say you have. Come on, Holy Ghost. It's a part of the process, saints. How do you know the Lord can save if he ain't never delivered you out of nothing? How can you tell somebody to be born again and receive the Lord and you ain't, you ain't never had no issue? Everything always glorified in your life. Come on, Holy Ghost. 
the devil is a liar. It's a process. And if you ain't made no mistake, keep on living. I promise you, keep on living. The Bible says the thief coming but to steal, kill, and destroy. Keep on living. So watch this. Tell your neighbor, it's a process. Y'all forgive me? I promise you, by the time we get to the end of the message, you're going to understand why I holler so much. I promise you're going to understand why I cry and sweat the way I do. Notice the process here. The Bible says the first thing Jesus did was he took, come on, bro. He took the bread. Dick Levi, baby, you got that bread? You get that bread? You didn't get that bread? Huh? My baby, you didn't, you, she couldn't. Okay, okay, let me, let, me, let me show you that. Go with me if you will. We got an imaginary piece of bread up here, a loaf of bread. I'm talking about the whole loaf. I ain't talking about the individual slices. I'm talking about the baked loaf of bread. Amen. The, the Catholics use it all the time. They break a little piece off, dip it in the wine. <laughs> Amen. Put it in your mouth. Amen. But just imagine we got the loaf here this morning, glory to God. The truth of the matter is we do have the loaf here. Hallelujah. This may be Jesus, glory to God. But watch this, my friends. If I told the deacon or the elder to bring a bread up here to me, the bread would have to be removed from where it is or where it was in order to be brought to where I am. Can you say amen? Jesus moved it from where it was to where he wanted it to be. Go with me now. The very first thing that has to happen in your life if you are going to get ready for the process is that you have to allow God, hallelujah, to move you whenever and however he chooses to. Come on, Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah, if you're going you to go through the process, you can't tell God how the process is supposed to go. He don't need your permission, hallelujah, to do whatever he wants to do. He owns you because, amen, it is his bread. He is the bread. He is the Lord. He owns you. He bought you with a price. And so the Bible is clear that if he take you and move you in your walk in Christ, hallelujah, he has every right to do as he wills in our life. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Jesus wants to take you from where you are to where he desires you to be. Now if you don't want to be moved, I would encourage you not to ask God, amen, to do anything for you. If you don't want to be moved, if you don't want to follow God's direction, you don't want to follow God's instruction, you don't want God doing with you what he chooses to do, I would encourage you today, do not ask God to do anything in your life. Come on, Holy Ghost. Because God, hallelujah, wants to do his perfect will in and through our lives. He wants to do his perfect will in your life. Can you say amen? So wait a minute, so watch this thing. If you don't want God to move if you're not satisfied with where you are, or let me say it this way, if you are satisfied where you are in your walk with Christ, don't ask God to do anything. If you're good just the way you are, you don't need God to change nothing, you don't need him to shift nothing, you don't need him to do anything special in your life, amen, just stay the way you are, don't ask God to do anything. Come on, let go. The psalmist said, God, make me more like you. Make me who you want me to be. The Bible says that he took you. He took the bread. Hallelujah. And he moved it 
And, and if, 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 if I had that loafer, I would ask the deacon, I would, I would, I would utilize the deacon or the elder, and I'll say the deacon took the bread from where it was and brought it to where I am. And one thing about, we got to know about the bread, that when God picked up the bread to break it, the Bible says the first thing he did after he, after, after he took hold of it, he blessed it. He blessed the bread after he took hold of it, and then he broke it. Come on, hold on. Come on, hold on. Uh, some, 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 we got some, some folk, we got some folk right here in the house. Amen. You're going through all kind of hell in your life. You got all kind of things happening in your world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God, God is breaking you. God is doing some things in your life. God, hallelujah, is showing himself God in your life. And you're wondering, amen. God, why am I going through what I got to go through? Why are you doing what you're doing, God? And God wants you to know it's a part of the process. The bread never asked Jesus what you're doing. The bread never asked Jesus where you're taking me to. Come on, Holy Ghost. The bread never asked Jesus, I don't want to be used in that manner. The bread was in the master's hand to be used in the master's glory in whatever capacity he wanted it to be used. Come on, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So, here we have God saying to us, I believe in the text, that we must be better willing to elect the Lord, to allow the Lord to move you from one place to the other. You must be willing, amen, and discerning enough to know when your season is done. Come on, Holy Ghost. Oh, come on, Holy Ghost. Sometimes God will move you because your season is done. Sometimes God will move you because, amen, hey, I'm good, amen, hallelujah, I'm good, so thank you. Sometimes, uh, sometimes the, he moves us, amen, because he's got a plan, hallelujah, and it may not be what we think our plan is. And sometimes, amen, we got to know that just because he moves you don't mean that moving, the way, don't mean that where you are is a bad place. Just because you got moved don't mean that you're in a bad place. It don't mean that something negative is going on in your life. It just means, amen, God's got a plan, and his plan is being orchestrated in your heart, in your life. The Bible says when Jesus took the bread, he took possession of it. Uh, it means that he possessed the bread. And people of God... If the Lord is going to prepare you for purpose, you've got to know, amen, and let the Lord possess you. You've got to let the Lord, amen, hallelujah, take ownership of your heart, of your decisions, of your mind, of your lifestyle, of your walk. You have to let the Lord, amen, own you. Tell your neighbor, amen, he owns me. Watch this order here, saints. The Bible is clear. It says that he took the bread and he blessed it. I heard a young brother testify the other day how he was streaming, strolling through the, through the internet and he came across a preacher, a young preacher, preaching about why young people don't want to come to church. And he said, Elder, amen. He said, young people don't want to come to church because uh, the pastor only has about three suits. And because he has to arm those three suits all the time, the suits kind of got a shine to them. He said, but the dope boys, they got 50 suits or more, amen. They changing suits every day, hallelujah. And, and, my, and my, the brother in the Lord says, he said, man, I was so angry at what that preacher was saying. He said, I wanted to throw a brick through the window, through the TV. He said, because why? He said, first of all, for hallelujah, we don't want to teach folk or get people to believe that the only reason you're blessed is because of your possessions. 
He, he said, he said, it's a wrong, it's a wrong thing to make people, make Christians believe that the only way you can identify yourself as being blessed is because of the car you drive or the house you live in. Other words, he said, I don't care what kind of, I don't care how big your closet is, I don't care how many cars you got, I don't care how big your house is, hallelujah, you are not blessed because of what you possess, you are blessed because God said you are, glory to God. You blessed, saint, because God says you blessed. It ain't got nothing to do about what you got, what you don't have. And the truth of the matter is, God says everything that he made was good. All of y'all blessed. Everybody blessed in the Lord. Come on, Holy Ghost. And so he was kind of frustrated with people, he said, because we send the wrong message, making people think that if you ain't got a nice car, if you ain't rolling in the dough, if you ain't got a big house, amen, you ain't blessed. But the devil is a lie. You bless, amen, if you ain't got but one suit and you got five shirts, hallelujah, and you change that shirt every day, making that suit a brand new suit every time you put it on. Guess what, my friend? You are blessed, and you ought to open your mouth and give God glory, hallelujah, because you are blessed. Yeah, we get it mixed up. We get it mixed up. We think that we're not blessed because of what we don't have. But I hear God saying this morning, amen, you are blessed whether you have it or you don't have it. God says you're blessed, amen. And you ought to know that you're blessed. And therefore, we ought to come every morning that we get up and put our feet on the ground. We ought to lift up our voice unto the Lord, hallelujah, and rejoice in his love. I had a friend of mine used to sing a song, I'm blessed, I'm happy and I know it because the Lord has delivered me. I'm blessed and I know that I am because he gave me a brand new life. Come on, I'm blessed because he walks with me and he makes me every day. And if you happen to ask me how are you, my friend, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. I don't know about you, my friend, but I am blessed, I'm blessed, and I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Why? Because of Jesus Christ. And the shed blood on Calvary's cross. God says you are blessed, saint. And don't you worry about what folks think or what folks are saying. You are blessed because God says you are. Hallelujah. You're blessed if you've been born again because Jesus lives in you. Hallelujah. You're blessed because the Lord saved you. Hallelujah. Come on, Holy Ghost. You're blessed. Because he saved us, Sister Iris. We're blessed, God, Deacon, because he saved us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lord saved us. And it's time, I believe, for the church and for the body of believers, amen, to get rid of this church nonsense. Hallelujah. That tries to make us believe that we're blessed based on our bank account. Or we're blessed based on the roll of money we got in our pocket. Or we're blessed based on how big our garage is. The devil is a lie. Hallelujah. I hear God say, you are blessed. Amen. If you ain't got none of that, you're still blessed. Glory to God. You can be a billionaire, a millionaire, and be miserable. Come on, I ain't going to call no name. But you can have all the money you think you got, amen, hallelujah, and still have five indictments waiting on you. Come on, Holy Ghost. We are blessed because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. That's why we're blessed. It has nothing to do, saint, what folks think or what folks say that makes you blessed. It's Jesus Christ and Jesus alone. Somebody give God praise right there. The psalmist, the psalmist said, the psalmist says, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, you got to declare to yourself, saint, that I'm blessed. 
you got to declare to yourself that I am blessed. Hallelujah. That's that's one of the problems, say. We 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 call on we we talk about the negative stuff more than we do talk about the best stuff in our life. God says, stop talking about the negative stuff, amen, and put your mind on Christ. Hallelujah. You are blessed, glory to God. We're blessed because Jesus says you are. Matthew 5, 1 through 12, I'm going to read through this real quick. And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, the disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, my friends, when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice! And be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Somebody ought to give God a hallelujah praise and shout, I'm blessed. <laughs> hallelujah. We're not blessed because of what he gives us. We're blessed because he says we are. Hallelujah. We're blessed because he says so, period. Knowing this, my friends, ought to erase the spirit of high sedentiness in the church. Yeah, I'm going to say that again. Amen. That went a little bit over your head. Amen. Knowing that we're blessed because he says so, ought to erase in the church that spirit of I'm better than you are. Come on, here we go. It ought, to, it ought to erase that, that, that spirit that says, amen, hallelujah, as little kids would say, nah, 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 I got this and you don't. The devil is a lie. You are blessed because God says you are, hallelujah, and it has nothing to do with what you have or you don't have. Hallelujah. So I don't know about you, my friends, but I told you, amen, I'm blessed. And every now and then, my wife will tell you, I got to get up in the early midnight hour, Elder, and I got to run around my house, and I got to holler and scream, and my wife got to wake me up and tell my wife got to come in there and say, baby, you're a little too loud. The, the kids are still trying to sleep. Amen. I said, well, I'm forgive me, baby. Amen. But I can't help myself. Hallelujah. Because God been good to me. I can't help myself. Because if you only knew what the enemy was trying to do to me, hallelujah, you would run for me too, glory to God. Yeah, if you only knew what you had to push through to get here this morning, you'd give God some glory too. If you only knew what the enemy had planned for your life, amen, you would give God glory too. The Bible says that when he took hold of the bread, he blessed it. <laughs> the Greek word here implies that he spoke over it. God spoke over what he blessed. He spoke over what he took hold of. Hallelujah. And I got news for you. If Jesus abides in your life, and the blood of Jesus, amen, the DNA of Christ, hallelujah, is running through your veins, hallelujah, you ought to give God praise, hallelujah, because he's speaking over your life, he's taking possession over your life to use you for his glory, somebody ought to give God praise. Well, what is the picture, what is it that God wants us to get from this? Picture with me, if you will. This loaf of bread being hard. The Bible says, 
Jesus says he's the he's the bread of life he's he's the bread that we eat he's bread for the hungry water for the thirsty he, he's the bread of life and I tell you just picture this with me this bread is hard amen and, and sometimes saints if God wants to do some things in your life hallelujah sometimes he's got to break us against something, amen, that's hard enough to break us. Come on, hold on. He said, yeah, 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 sometimes, 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 sometimes the bread of life, amen, and God, God uses the bread of life, hallelujah, to break us. Sometimes, amen, when you're trying to break a loaf of bread, especially that baked bread, when you're trying to bake that, when you're trying to break that bread, sometimes it's hard, hallelujah, to break it because the bread is hard and it needs to be broken, amen, you need to put some pressure on it. Come on, hold on. Now, hear God say that sometimes, in order to be broke, in order for God to break something, you have to hit it up against something. It has to hurt. Come on, Holy Ghost. Sometimes, to be broken, you have to be knocked around a little bit. Come on, Holy Ghost. We don't like that. We, we don't like that. See, we don't like that. See, now, see, they say, I, I see it in the spirit. All right, Pastor, see, you was doing real good till you went there. Come on, Holy Ghost. Cause we don't like being knocked around, and we don't want to see Jesus as the as the master that He is. That's gonna knock us around and beat us down a little bit to get us a man to be what He called us to be. But sometimes, my friend, God will take us, Hallelujah, through some hard places, through some hard times to get us where He wants us to be. Sometimes the process is hard, glory to God. Sometimes the process is hard. And we don't like it. I don't get no amens right there because we don't like hard. Come on, Holy Ghost. Unless it's us dishing it out. Come on, Holy Ghost. We can dish it out, but we don't want to receive it. And sometimes God is saying that the process that he brings us through is not always going to be easy, saying. Sometimes what God has for you is so serious and so profound and so wonderful that he wants to do that he's got to take you through some things that some other folk might not have to go through. Everybody can't do what you do. Everybody can't go where you go. Everybody can't handle the pressure you've handled in your life. Everybody can't handle the heat God has put on you. Come on, Holy Ghost. Sometimes we got to go through some hard stuff. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, my mommy, my mommy used to tell me as a kid, she said, boy, a hard head yes, makes a soft behind. And you don't believe fat me squeeze, you keep on doing what you're doing. And you're going to bump your head. Amen. She says something I can't say. She, she, come on, let go. Sometimes, God deals with us through acts of kindness, but it's hard. Because he loves us. Because he knows the plans he has for us. Because he knows the challenges you're going to have to face. He knows, amen, that you're going to have to have tough skin to deal with what you're about to deal with. It's a hard process, glory to God. Tell your neighbor it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Ain't no sense. Hey, hey, man. Hey, man. Uh, ain't, no sense of, ain't no sense of trying to sugarcoat it. It's hard. Uh, sometimes the Lord is breaking you because you have some stuff that needs to fall off. If I had that loaf of bread, amen, that my baby couldn't find, we, we ate ours. At, come on. Uh, we ate ours, amen. Uh, we ate ours. Uh, we get bread in our we, I'm trying to stop eating bread out of Because my wife loves bread, amen. We eat all kinds of bread. Sesame seed bread, all kinds of bread. Come on. Butter bread, sugar bread. Come on. Go. Amen. I got to stop eating so much bread. You can stop eating the bread in the physical. But don't stop eating the bread of the word. Come on, Holy Ghost. But if we broke that bread up here, say, breaking that bread, you will find that things will fall off here on the altar. And one of the things about the word of God, say, 
is that when God breaks us, he's breaking us with the purpose in mind. The purpose, my friend, is not, amen, for you, amen, to feed your stomach. The purpose is that God, amen, want to break some things off of you. God want to break some things out of us. Can you say amen? So sometimes, 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 God has you going through this breaking because he's looking to get rid of that bad attitude you got. He's looking to get rid of that nasty spirit you have. He's looking to get rid of that depression you keep finding yourself in. He keeps, he keeps trying, to, he's trying to break some things off of you. Amen. That bitterness, amen. An angry spirit, hallelujah, that you can't love nobody. Trying to break in us, amen, that high-mindedness. To try to make us believe, amen, we better off or better than somebody else. The devil is a lie. God tried to break some things off us. Jealousy in the house. Come on, glory to God. We brothers and sisters, we siblings in the Lord, and we jealous of one another. Come on, go. And so God is allowing things to happen because he's trying to break some things off of us. Hallelujah. And, and for most of us, some of not all, not all of us, some of us, God, he, can, he can't break it off of us because we keep, amen, acting like ain't nothing wrong with us. Come on, go. Yeah, we acting like, amen, we got it all together. We come to church, amen, looking good, smelling good, hallelujah, walking, walking all good, how, got our head all up, ain't got time to talk to nobody, can't hold no conversation with nobody because you got it all together. And God said, I'm trying to break that spirit off of you. I'm trying to humble you in the sight of the Lord that he might lift you up in due time, that he might exalt you in the places that he wants you to be, hallelujah. But there's some things he's got to break off of us first. I'm trying to break off that insecurity you have. I'm trying to break off, amen, that lust spirit, amen, that keeps you, amen, hallelujah, searching for the wrong thing. Come on, God. Help me, God, help me. Uh, yeah, uh, God, God trying to, God, look, uh, know what I said. I'm going to go back, I'm going to go all the way back. Uh, 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 Mr. Crusoe, I'm going to go all the way back to what I said earlier. I didn't say that you were a sinner. I said I was a sinner. Christ died for me when I was yet a sinner. I, I, I can't speak for you. You got to make it. I know what the Bible said, but you got to make that thing personal in your own life. And God is saying, if you're going to act like, amen, he ain't did nothing for you, he ain't brought you out of nothing, he ain't took you into something, hallelujah, then you ought to be right there where you are, amen, God got something for you. I promise you it's coming. But God wants to humble us in the sight of the Lord that he might exalt us in due time. And God wants to get rid of some things on us, saint, amen, that we have in the church, amen, that keeps us from being unified. Keeps us at odds with one another. Oh, yeah. We done talked about all the prayers we got going on. And I just see in the spirit realm, thank you, Holy Ghost, there's some folk in the church. I ain't praying for them. Come on, Holy Ghost. I ain't praying for them. They ain't serious about God. <laughs> Come on, Holy Ghost. I know, I know it's true because the Lord wouldn't have me say it if it wasn't. There's some folk in the church that refuse to pray for other saints for whatever reason. Refuse to pray for other saints for whatever reason you got. And God says, these are the type of things I'm trying to break off of you. And so I got to put you through the hard times of life that you might realize, amen, it's the same love that brought you out that's going to bring your sister and brother out. Hallelujah. And if you can't love him, then you don't love me, Lord of God. Come on, Lord God. God trying to get rid of the whole mind and spirit, the lying spirit. That wanna be spirit. You know, you got some folk in the church. We wanna be like so and so. I wanna be like Mike. No, God said be like Christ. Yeah. Quit trying to be like everybody else. Be who God calls you to be. 
And so I just believe this morning that God is saying to us, break me, Lord God, until this bad habit breaks out for me. Come on, Lord God, you got to be real. Is any real people in the church this morning? I'm talking to real people. I'm talking to real folk this morning. God, Lord, Lord God, break this bad habit off of me, amen, that I can be all you called me to be. It takes a saint, amen, that's willing to be real. And he's like, yeah, I said, okay, okay, God, okay. okay God said, okay, God said, you got to break it down even farther than that. He said, go, there's some folk, and they're saying stuff like, well, I ain't done that. I ain't did what he did or what she did. And God says, if you thought it, <laughs> if you thought it, you're just as guilty as doing it. The Bible says if you break one commandment, you're guilty of all of them. Come on, Holy Ghost. We ain't got no room to be sitting around trying to count, okay, I ain't did that, I ain't did this, I ain't did that, I ain't did this. And I, no, you ain't got time to be doing all that. All we got to do is get before God's presence and say, God, break me. I'm guilty. Whatever you say, I'm guilty of. I'm guilty. And I need the Lord, baby, to break me. I'm on your trip. Say what you want to say, how you want to say. I don't care what you say, what you think, what you do. I need the Lord. I want the Lord. I need the Lord. I want him to cause me to do whatever he wants me to do. My bishop said me, my bishop said years ago, you, he said something like, if you're not willing to be embarrassed for God, you ain't ready for God. Sometimes God will allow things to happen in your life that might bring embarrassment to you. But it ain't, to, it ain't to crush you, it ain't to hurt you, it ain't to stop you or kill your spirit. It's to let you know, amen, God wants us to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord that he might be exalted in our life. God's trying to get us, amen, where he wants us to be. I mean, we've been talking about it for the last six months, amen, a prepared place for a prepared people. God is preparing us, and sometimes say this hard process that God brings us through, hallelujah, is a process, amen. A part of the process is the preparation for our life. Tell your neighbor, he's preparing me for something good, something great. Hallelujah, I'm coming to a close. I know, I know, I'm coming, I promise. Amen. Break me, God until my insecurity falls off. Break me, God, so I'll stop conforming to what every man wants me to be. Break me, God, so I'll stop chasing after everything that got a scope. Come on, Holy Ghost. Break me, God! Come on, Holy Ghost. That I'll stop chasing after every man, amen, that puts a dollar bill in my hand. Break me, God! But I'll be more like you, glory God. Cause me to walk in your ways. But I don't die and go to a burning hell, glory to God. Break me! That's how serious it is. Oh, that's what God break me, God. I want nobody to know I'm telling you to break me. Uh, no. Shout it from the rooftop. I'm tired of doing this thing on my own. I'm tired of trying to please everybody. I'm tired, amen, of hearing, God break me. Break me from wanting to do my own will opposed to doing yours. Whatever you have to do, break me. What I love about the breaking is that, the, you remember the woman that went to Jesus, she said, Jesus, can I, he said, she said to him, he asked him, he was, he was feeding the disciple, and she went to ask for something, and he said, this is not for the dogs. And she said, well, even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. What I love about the breaking, Minister Riley, is that when God breaks us, there's some crumbs that fall off of us. Come on, let go. There's some things God brings, amen, in our life. There's some blessings, because guess what? The blessing, the good and the bad, is wrapped up in the loaf. And when he blesses us, he blesses us. The Bible says he blessed the bread first, then he broke it. 
So I hear God saying that no matter how much breaking you got to go through, you ought to give God glory because you was blessed before you went through the trial. You were blessed before he brought you into this hard place. And the blessings of God, even in our brokenness, Elder, even in our weakness, even in our struggle, there's a blessing for somebody else's life connected to your life. In the midst of what you're dealing with. Stop holding your head down. Stop letting folk whisper in your ear. God can't use you. Look what you done done. Look what you ain't. Bible says you are blessed before he even broke you. You were blessed when you came out of your mama's womb. Watch this. We were all born in sin, and yet we were blessed and sinful at the same time. Come on, Holy Ghost. At the same time. So all this stuff, what am I saying? All this stuff folk trying to tell you, well, if you love God, you still wouldn't be struggling with that. I heard my, I heard, I heard, I heard folks say, let it go. Just let it go. Let go and let God. No, no, I'm going to tell you what you do. Because sometimes, my friend, the truth be told, you can't let it go by yourself. I don't care what nobody telling you. There ain't enough, there ain't enough programs that'll make you let it go. There ain't enough, there ain't enough, there ain't enough AA, triple A, amen, A, there ain't enough of nothing that's gonna make you go, let that go. If Jesus don't do it, amen, it's not gonna be done. No, forget about, forget about to let it go. Just let God go to God. Let God. When he get through putting some pressure on you, See, he know how to love you. He know how to hold you. He know how to embrace you. He know how to cover you. He know how to do all these things in the midst of what you're dealing with. And guess what? The day will come. You will open your eyes. And that thing that held you captive don't hold you no more. Why? Because you're safe in the master's arms. You're safe in Jesus. Hallelujah. Let God have his way. I hear, I hear God saying it's important, say. Let's keep looking at me. Keep looking at me. Amen. Don't go have no conversation over have a little sidebar conversation. Amen. Look at me. That's the problem. You think you know more than God do. Come on, go. Look at me. The Bible says, God says that without him, St. John 15, verse 5, without him, he is divine. We are the branches. He's the vine. We are the branches. Without me, you can't do no thing. Without me, he says, you can't do. I wouldn't even be able to walk across this floor. We wouldn't even be able to stand up and shout, give him glory, if it wasn't for his strength, if it wasn't for his will. If it wasn't for his presence, if it wasn't for his glory. Why is this important, Saint? Because we got too many folk walking away from the church, walking away from God, because they realize that this life is too hard, and they keep hearing saints tell them, why are you still doing that? Why are you still acting that way? Hallelujah. Because God's still working on me. Because he's still working on me. That's a part of my process. You say what you want to say, Lord of God. You don't know my process. Yes, Come on, hold on. Yeah. Problem tears of joy, sir. Folk don't know your process. Folk don't know what you had to go through to get where you are this morning. Folk don't know what the Lord doing in your life. And you can't get caught up in what folk think, what they say, amen. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep trusting in the Lord and allow God to have his perfect way in your life. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. 
Come on, Holy Ghost. This Jesus. Jesus over everything. Too many folks being ran from the church because we keep trying to make them believe they got to be holy than thou. We keep trying to tell them, pull your pants up. Girl, that dress is too short. Girl, those pants too tight. Sit yourself down, old man, and let God do his perfect work. God woke them up this morning, told them to put on whatever you got, amen. Get to the house of God that I can work on your life. If we got folk, amen, we won't stop folk, amen. Take your hat off in the sanctuary. Man, let that man be and let God work on him. Come on, Holy Ghost. If I listen, and y'all know it's true, if I had listened to everything folks said about me, and some of it's true, some of it's not, but if I had listened, I wouldn't be calling on God. I wouldn't be trying to trust him. I sure wouldn't be telling nobody else to trust him. Because, amen, I don't know about you, but when you're in a hard place, you be looking at God like, wait a minute, what's going on? Why is this happening? Why am I going through all this? God, you got to show me. You got to tell me what's happening. If it wasn't for God, saint, I wouldn't be able to do this. I wouldn't be able to do this. The bread falls, when they break the bread, the bread falls apart. When God breaks us, it causes some of us to fall apart, glory to God. Okay, you have, no, 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 Anybody here falling apart? You having a hard time making your bills meet, paying your bills? You have a hard time, amen, putting, uh, doing everything God told you to do with your finances? You having a hard time, amen, raising your children? You having a hard time, amen, trying to get your kids to be who God called them to be? Come on, Holy Ghost. There are folk in the church falling apart. And God wants you to know that even though you're falling apart, the good thing you need to know, saints, is you're still in the master's hand. When he broke the bread, he took hold of the bread, he blessed it, then he broke it. But when he broke it, go back to Jeremiah 18, the potter's wheel. The bread the potter, the clay, was still in the master's hand. Even though it's marred. Even though you're struggling. Even though, amen, everything is falling apart, it seems. You can rejoice because you're still in the master's hand. Somebody ought to give God glory what I'm saying. You ought to give God glory because we know, say, if we weren't in his hand, we would have went, come on, Hugo. There's been many who have went and killed themselves because they didn't have hope for tomorrow. The fact that we're in his hand, say, is a reminder to us when we eat this supper. It's a reminder to us that no matter what's going on in your life, no matter how hard things are and what it seems like, God wants you to know you are still in the master's hand. And if you're in God's hand, saint, all things are possible in Christ Jesus. Come on, say, give God glory. All things are possible. Hallelujah. He can still turn your situation around. Hallelujah. This folk in here, amen, divorce. This folk in here, amen. Hallelujah, going through all kind of uh, craziness and all kind of stuff. Hallelujah. And I hear God saying, amen. Hallelujah, you got trouble on every side. But God says you are still blessed, Sister Dukes, Sister Ruth. God said you're still blessed, Dr. Beth, Sister Carrie, Brother, brother Minister uh, Crusoe. God said you're still blessed. Ha, 
hallelujah, all of those, Sister Cora, and all those, amen, but brother, brother of Levi, you're still blessed, even though you're dealing and still grieving with grief, amen, because of the loss of the loved one. You are still blessed. <laughs> hallelujah. We give God glory. And I'm going to say this last point. I'm going to sit down. When you break the bread, Saint, sometimes you don't realize the aroma of the bread until it's broken. I hear God saying this morning that some of you are so anointed and filled with the Holy Ghost that what God is doing, folk wouldn't even know that you are so close to God as you are until he broke you. Because when he broke you, amen, the aroma of the Holy Ghost, amen, flows, oozes out of you. Hallelujah. You're still able to love. You're still able to want to cry with folk. You're still able to pray with people. You're still able to help others. You're still able to do what God asked you to do in the house of God. Even though you're hurting, even though you're falling apart, even though you're broken, you're still able, amen, to give God glory. Hallelujah. And that's because of the aroma on your life. And folk wouldn't have known it. God had not broke you. There's a purpose. There's a purpose, Sister Tina, in the process. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't walk away from God. Don't give up on God. It's a purpose in the process and the Bible says that when he when he comes there is a reward hallelujah waiting for you we sung the song this morning so Lord crown me in your arms crown me in your arms take me to that secret place and saint, that's the place we want to be today in our moments of darkness, in our moments of hardship, in our moments of struggle, in our time of pain, and all kind of things going on in our life. We want God to take us to that secret place where he holds us, embraces us, covers us, keeps us in his will according to his purpose. Put your hands together and give God a Holy Ghost praise. Give God a Holy Ghost praise. Give God a Holy Ghost praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God a Holy Ghost praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He saved us from the penalty of sin. A purposely prepared purpose for your life. Saying, I love you and I thank God for you. I really do. And I pray, amen, that this word of God has landed in your heart to stay. I pray that you'll walk out of here, amen, better than you were when you came in. I pray you're walking out of here, amen, declaring, I will walk in the strength of the Lord. I will walk in the strength of the Lord. Hallelujah. God loves you and may God keep you, is my prayer. As Dr. Bear prepares to come, we prepare to take the Lord's Supper. Allow this supper to have a new meaning in your life. Allowed to have a new purpose in your life. We take this because God has a purpose for it in our lives. Amen? Amen. Come on, one more time. Put your hands together and give Jesus Christ a praise.
For this day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I shall not die but live to declare his works. Thank you, Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, and my strength and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth, and sing praises. If you have not received the element, get the elements now and stand. Prepare for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy of the Virgin of Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life ever after. Ye that do truly in this repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors. Let's take these sacraments to your heart. The general confession now. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifest sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter see and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who thy tender mercy, this give thy only begotten Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption who made thereby his oblation of himself, must offer a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel, commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institute, in remembrance of his death and passion, 
may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you, and for many for your remissions of sins. Do this as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, to preserve thy soul and body unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance of that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith and with thanksgiving. Let's eat. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, to preserve thy soul and body unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. All together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, we, thy humbly servants, desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of this passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, our bodies, to be a reasonable, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy, and although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounding duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom is the unity of the Holy Ghost. All honor and glory be unto thee, O Father, almighty, world without end. Amen and amen. 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 Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be among you and remain with you always. And as we leave, we bring our gifts of thanksgiving, come down to the center aisle and go back out to your left and your right. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer for today. Amen. Come down and bring 
your gifts. Thank you, thank you, got these scars. thank you, sometimes thank it's you. all Amen. I can remember. thank you, thank you, where's the sun, give me light, thank got you. to thank be you. more to this life, thank you. can't lie, 